Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT in a private mode, which can be very useful if you want to analyze your own personal notes, ideas or some documents that you don't want to upload to ChatGPT and make them available for the training algorithms. We'll be using an app that I created called Infranodus, which is a visual AI text analysis tool. And actually the graph will be very helpful in keeping our data private because the way that Infranodus works is that it visualizes your ideas or text as a graph, shows all the connections between them, identifies clusters of ideas that belong together. These are the main topics in your text. And then it finds the gaps between those clusters and feeds those gaps into ChatGPT to generate some insights for you. So you don't have to feed your original text into it, but rather a processed version. And uh, this way, ChatGPT doesn't really get a very clear idea of your original text. So it can be very useful for analyzing your information and also running it in a private mode where you don't want to reveal your data. Keep watching if you want to learn how it works. So first of all, uh, normally what I would do if I want to analyze something using ChatGPT, I would have to go to ChatGPT and then upload my documents. So for example, these two notes, which I took with author AI, and uh, I would ask it, tell me what's missing. So there are some problems here already for me. One problem is that I'm uploading those documents there and they will be part of ChatGPT training data. I think this is uh, in their terms and conditions, unless you're using their, their API. Like if you upload the files like that, they will use them in trainings. And I don't like this because uh, these are my personal ideas and thoughts. And then when I start chatting with those documents, even though it can do a pretty good job in summarizing ideas, it's not so good when, when, uh, when I want to see what the gaps are between those ideas. I have to read a lot, like it just says like, okay, uh, this is what this note is about, this is what that note about, and imagine what happens when I have 10 notes. So I will have to chat with it so long that it will be much easier for me to read all these transcripts of my notes and get the ideas myself. So this is where Infranodus becomes very helpful because what we can do here is go in the private mode. So you open the menu in, in Infranodus, create a new private graph, give it a name. So for example, I will call it Infranodus author private. And when I do this through this interface here, it's going to open a new dialog where I can add new files. So here I'm going to upload uh, some of my author notes. And very important, at this stage, choose this option, do not save graph. What happens here is that Infranodus is not going to save anything in the database. Uh, our scripts are just going to process your data and give you back the graph as the final result. Nothing is saved, so if you do any operations on the graph, you will not see them. It's kind of like private incognito mode, but this way you ensure that your data is not even stored with us, even though it would still be safe because we would not be using them in trainings. They would just be used to show you data. So in any case, here is a visualization of all of my notes. I think it's uh, the notes that I took over the last week. I was thinking about two new projects, also some new ideas about Infranodo. So I just want to kind of summarize my thinking process. I will make another video where I talk more about uh, this approach of analyzing your own ideas. But here I just wanted to show you how we're going to use ChatGPT to derive some interesting insights from it. So first of all, when I look at the graph, because it was voice notes, I was using words like kind and thing a lot. So I'm selecting those words and uh, I will hide them from the graph because I want to see uh, what is around them. And I can also do this if I go to the analytics panel on the right, main ideas. So it's available here if you don't see it in your Infernos interface. And then I select, uh, I see the most influential concepts. I see that kind and thing are influential, but I'm not really interested in them. So I click reveal underlying ideas or I hide them from the graph. It's going to do the same thing. And what Infranodus does is that it erases those two concepts from the graph and visualizes a knowledge graph uh, without those two ideas. And the way that the knowledge graph works is that the more important ideas are shown bigger on the graph. So I was talking about time a lot and making some games and interesting stories, but also starting with the question. So maybe a description of some kind of process. So these words were quite important to the discourse and they're all shown here in the most influential concepts. And then here I have main topical clusters. And by the way, nothing is saved now. 
you're only operating with what you're seeing on the screen. So there is no record of this anywhere at the moment except for your browser session computer and that's it. If you close this tab, everything disappears. So that's great if you don't want to share your data with anyone. Uh, now we will be using a little bit of AI to generate some insights from this graph. First of all, we look at the main topics and we can see what they're about kind of, but if you don't have time to do the interpretation yourself, we have a very nice button here called reveal high level ideas. And what it does is that it sends it to GPT-4, uh, those clusters, there's actually more of them if you click here. So you can see uh, what those clusters are about. So there is a very big cluster on data visualization. Um, I was talking a lot about this in my notes, time fractals, code making and relationships in game or how you create games. What's really interesting here is that we didn't send this whole text to ChatGPT uh, and to the underlying AI to generate those insights. We just used the special network analysis algorithm to identify those clusters. And we are asking to summarize what those clusters are about by just sending the keywords. So your original data did not travel in this case to uh, ChatGPT, which is really useful. So this feature you can use without being worried that something is going to be sent to ChatGPT. Then the next interesting thing that you can do. So for example, this gives me like a clear idea of what those nodes are about. I can also click here, see some more topics, uh, design interaction pattern difference. So I remember, okay, it was about game design, fractals, and time and how time can be represented uh, through the framework of fractals, also writing some code and visualizing ideas. Okay, this gives me a really good reminder of what it's about. I can zoom into a certain topic. So for example, I can go to, let's say time fractals, and then I can see all the statements uh, where I'm talking about time fractals, or I can also open this topic up and see like, okay, what have I been saying about Fractal periods, okay, there are same seven statements, let's see, fractal system and period. Okay, so this is a note where I'm talking about looking at natural systems and uh, see how the fractal representation allows us to understand that it's an adaptable entity, that it's resilient to external influence. So that reminds me the context of my thoughts if I want to get into it. And I don't need to feed it to the AI and tell it, okay, generate some summary for me. You can do that actually if you click here, summarize visible, it's going to send it to AI. Uh, but I don't want it to be part of uh, their training. I think because we do it through their API, I think it's in their terms and conditions that they don't use this for training purposes. You have to verify this. I cannot guarantee their terms for them, but I think this is a way to kind of work around ChatGPT because ChatGPT is using your input for training purposes. But if you use an app which uses uh, the API, then it doesn't use it. So this is another way to kind of like circumvent it. Okay, then you don't have to do this also. Uh, no, no need to summarize. Just select some words and read what you've been writing about. It's much more efficient and you get a direct representation of your thought in this case. Okay, so if we analyze a few topics like that, for example, look at some other ones like here, and I see some interesting ideas like, uh, what have I been saying about database algorithms, for instance? Click here, and then I see that, okay, the way you write into this database. This was actually thinking about this private mode and how to make sure that no user data is saved uh, on our server. So this reminds me about another idea. And then I think I was connecting it to the idea of visualizing data. So for example, I can even see if there's any connection be between database and visualize. Okay, let's see. Ah, yeah, visualization of the data, but without representing it in the database. So there I show you how I can explore the ideas. I'm not using AI at this point, except for creating the names for these main topics. Now, the most interesting part comes here. Uh, we go into blind spots, and then if we click on highlight in the network, so let me just reset all the filters, then I click highlight the network, and then I reiterate through the gaps. And what happens here is that Infranodus finds the clusters of ideas 
that uh, are existing in this graph, but that are not well connected. And you can reiterate through them by clicking show another gap. So for example, here I have a very interesting gap between design interaction and pattern difference. So some kind of differences that you can identify in, in patterns of data and uh, interaction and design, so maybe UX stuff. And I can click here to see which nodes are relating to those two topics directly. So I'm not sending again anything to AI, I'm just using the knowledge graph to explore my own thoughts. Okay, so here I've been talking about um, uh, how we can see fractals everywhere in nature. This I remember now from reading this text. And then another one is how uh, it's personal note, so it's pretty Ah, yeah, so it's kind of like how you can develop new ideas when you're just programming stuff and from um, the knowledge that you get from language. So you see, this, these two topics, they seem to be unrelated because, and that's what the graph shows also, you see that there was a, a one context where I was talking about how you can see different patterns in nature, another one very specific about how I was talking about uh, getting inspired by your programming work and maybe also from the technical um, work that you're performing or how you work in a team. So I can think of a connection between those two topics or I can send this gap to AI. And what happens here is that it's just going to send those two clusters of words to AI, not the whole statements and not the whole text. It's not going to send everything that I generated so far to uh, the GPT-4 AI. Instead, it's just going to choose this gap and then it's going to send it here, and then it will generate some questions. And here, for example, I can see how can the physical design of an interface affect the user ability to learn the relationship between mean and difference in repeating pattern on a larger scale. Okay, let's see what other questions are there, and then I'm going to choose one. What is the difference between the mean scale of a big pattern changes? So this is kind of like uh, the mathematical representation of change, and how how does the design of space affect the pattern and mean of physical changes we feel in our body over time? I think I like this one. So as you can see, some of them are not so well formed. And this is because we're not feeding the whole data, but just the clusters. So you will have to rephrase them a little bit. But at least two out of three times, you will get to some really good results. Like here, how can design of space affect the pattern and mean of physical changes we feel in our body over time? Great. So. Uh, how can design of space affect the pattern, this I'm going to remove, of the physical changes we feel in our body over time? I would actually copy and paste this question to my personal notes because uh, I really like this idea of thinking how I can design a space that will uh, affect people's feelings. It's something I didn't think about. I think I was thinking more about the UX that will affect people's feelings. So this is also interesting for me. I think I will kind of go into like an interface space. Let's make it really strange. And then I'm going to take that question that I collaboratively generated with the AI and I'm going to feed it back into the AI. So I click elaborate there and then um, here I can add some statement or like a note what I want to do with that statement. I'm just going to keep this default one, elaborate on this statement. And then it's going to send this question that the AI generated back to AI to come up with some interesting ideas. So for example, here it says the design of an interface space can directly affect our physical responses by determining ergonomic factors and user interaction duration, which over time shapes patterns of physical change in our body, which makes me think now about uh, this project that I'm working on and how, uh, in fact, now I'm making something that can visualize a certain dynamics in time and then feedback uh, not only a visual representation but also sound, some kind of like a electronic drum machine, let's say, based on natural dynamics. But I was thinking about implementing user feedback into it. So we detect how they move and this in turn affects the image and the sound and then it kind of gets in a loop where 
um, both the software and the human are influencing each other. So it reminds me about this very important idea and thinking more about like how I can also take it into the space of ergonomics, which could be very interesting for this idea economically, right? So as you can see, what I'm doing is that I'm not expecting the ready-made uh, answers or questions from AI. I'm just feeding the data, getting some results back. I think about them. And my only intention here is to find the new connections I haven't thought of before so that I can connect my ideas together in a much more interesting way. I can generate more responses. Design of an interface impacts how we interact with it, shaping our movement and posture. These alterations in physical activity could then induce bodily changes over time, perhaps leading to improved agility or even potential uh, strain injuries. So this is interesting because it kind of says that it can improve agility but also uh, create injuries. And that makes me think also how does our body hold ourselves when we work with tools and interfaces and uh, it's quite interesting because most of the time people are quite stiff so when I'm thinking about developing a certain interface like this new electronic drum machine that I'm working on which would work from the screen I want to also incorporate this idea that it, that the body the way that the body interacts with it should make it move also that you're not stuck in front of the computer but that you're actually actively physically engaged with it so I think this will also be a pretty interesting approach and then once I generated a few of those questions, of course, I can write them down um, because remember, this graph is not going to be saved. So if I save notes, uh, it's not going to be uh, kept there, right? So this is very important. I should probably open my own text editor on my own computer and save all these ideas. I'm recording this video, so I don't have to do it because I can always come back to them. But to you, I would recommend uh, if you're working in this private mode to actually use like a notepad on your computer and then I can generate more responses more ideas even ask the system to elaborate on them by clicking this button again I can also write critique this statement this is a very nice approach and you see we generate all this data all these ideas without feeding uh, our original text to the AI we're just using the graph to derive the most important elements keeping them also general enough, which is really suitable for when you want to generate your ideas because we're also not priming the AI with uh, our own thoughts, but rather just kind of going through uh, the different combinations of concepts and trying to use the AI to generate some interesting ideas in relation to them. Okay, so for example, uh, here it's talking about psychological effects. So this is great because we, we talked about physiological effects. Now we talk about psychological effects. Great. Challenges me even more and uh, makes me think about uh, implementing some of those ideas into the tool that I'm working on. And once you're done with this, then you can ask it to show another gap and so on. Once you reiterate through everything, reset the highlight and then use this... Um, sort of approach which I showed like in the previous videos that you can actually uh, slice off the layers from the top of the graph and reveal what's underneath. So once you explore a certain idea, just slice off a few layers by using this button here or just by selecting the nodes and hiding them from the graph and then it will regenerate some more uh, ideas for you here and you will get deeper and deeper into the subject and uh, move away from the topics that you already know to the more specific ones that maybe you were not aware of. So here, for instance, music composition, great. This is a very good one because uh, I remember I was talking to myself about this, making a mental note, and it reminds me. Uh, and here I'm gonna click on tension because it's interesting in the context of music and frequency and see in which context I use those two words. You see when I click on a word it shows me in which context I used it. So I was using it with the word music, harmony, so yeah, t tension and harmony for instance. I have three statements that contain this. I can further reduce it by also choosing another word and then I say okay so with let's see about let's talk about music, harmony, mathematics and scales and how harmony works mathematically. Great. This reminds me also another idea which I had. And by the way, 
uh, here's a special trick. So for example, imagine you select some ideas about music, harmony and uh, uh, writing music on the one side of the graph. Also a very good way to generate a new idea is to choose some other part of the graph at the same time. So for example, body, movement and feel. You see it's on the completely opposite end. So you're generating the gap yourself now. Then when you go into AI insights, all these words are selected. You go into GPT-4 chat mode, click this button, and then it's going to generate an idea for you that would try to connect those ideas, those concepts together. So for example, here it says, the tension and harmony in rhythm music can evoke a unique body movement, fostering a profound sense of physical appreciation and emotional feel. Great. So the connection between the music and how we move when we dance to it. This is very good. I should integrate it into the project I'm working on. Then the intricate tension and harmony found in rhythm music and transparent expressive body movement, creating a unique sensory experience of feeling the notes. Great. Which makes me also think about how I'm going to describe this project to the public. I'm kind of sad now I cannot save all these ideas into the notes, but luckily I'm recording this video. So this is why uh, when you work, on this using your own files uh, when you have the private mode graph not saved just use a text editor but if you don't mind saving your notes on our servers you can also do that because you can always then erase the graph so once you worked with it just erase it and there will be no trace of it left anywhere uh, because we don't store your data and uh, we don't copy them into some other repository to then train them or something. So it will really stay private. And this is a great way to work uh, with your own thoughts because I know the feeling that you don't want to upload them anywhere, um, but you still want to use the AI to generate something from them. So this can be an interesting way. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Try it out with your own notes and ideas using Infranodus. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments to the video below and also subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new videos as they come out. And it's Merry Christmas today, so I wish this to you and uh, thank you very much for your attention.